Hey everybody, welcome to Sew with Joe. Where today we're going to be talking about stingless bees and the good they can do for humanity. And then I have a few more quick shots of good world news while I am patching my uh, blanket. I am making a blanket out of a bunch of old jeans and khakis and t-shirts. And this is what we've got so far. I haven't actually given anyone an update for a little while, so here kind of what we got going on. It's coming along. One day I'll do a zoom out and, and everything. But anyway, stingless bees is what we're looking for, what we're talking about today. Primarily. And stingless bees of the Amazon. And there are apparently quite a few different species of stingless bees. A lot of them are in the Amazon. And It's interesting because different bees and different um, pollens, different plants that they harvest pollen from, uh, their honey can have different medicinal pro um, properties. Um, people in the Amazon use honey to treat a lot of things, as, as do people worldwide, but uh, they seem to be learning to fine-tune it a little bit. Um, they use honey from different areas to treat colds, cuts, skin conditions, infections, diabetes, stomach issues, burns, arthritis, 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 diabetes, arthritis and cancer. And in particular, the honey from a plant called the Azra plant is uh, being studied for its cancer uh, reducing properties. So bees could be the solution to uh, a number of different ailments as well as being vitally important to producing crops. Um, there's a stat shows that uh, keeping crops next to, to fields in the Amazon resulted in a 44% increase on average in yields uh, for that particular field. So massive, massive benefits just to keeping bees close by to allow for a more ready uh, pollination of your uh, of your crops. And this is providing the, the people of the Amazon with, as I said, a great force of, a source of food and medicine, but also income. Because as the science is becoming more fine-tuned and they're learning more about what their bees can do, the value of their honey is skyrocketing. I think they said from went from three dollars per pound to twenty seven. I don't know how accurate that stat is, but at, uh, ten, ten, a tenfold increase is pretty uh, substantial, pretty much anywhere, uh, or I should say ninefold increase, uh, substantial pretty much anywhere you uh, you might happen to go. And the other, uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, using traditional bee houses or traditional beehives, the uh, the white box ones, uh, rather than having the bees harvested traditionally, and the traditional way you know of harvest was because the bees would live in trees. Uh, they would actually, in a lot of cases, not all, not all cases, but in a lot of cases, they would actually cut down a tree that had the bee's nest in it and then collect the honey rather than having people risking their lives going up in the tree to collect the honey and getting stung. They knock the tree down and then they can... Whoop, there's a fly that's 
taking a licking to me. Keeps going. So, not only are you saving trees by using these beehives, you're also increasing the quality of your honey. Because it's no longer wild and mixed in with all sorts of wood and vegetation and all sorts of nastiness. Now you get a pure honey out of the comb. Um, a lot less processing involved. Now I've got a few other uh, items of good news. We'll just come at you with some quick hits. And uh, apparently, they've developed an exoskeleton that allows children with cerebral, pal or cerebral, uh, cerebral palsy, wow, can't even say it, um, to walk. So, you basically strap the child into a bunch of packs on his legs that form, or on his legs and, and body that form an exoskeleton and they assist the child and allow him to walk and, and play with his kids and uh, with his peers rather than being bound to a wheelchair. So pretty massive, pretty massive news. Another big story is they are developing a way to prevent clogged arteries. Um, a, uh, a natural process in our, in our body that uh, fades over time is, is being, um, it's being rediscovered how to rekindle that, that process. And that avoids uh, arteries it keeps your arteries from hardening basically and that's what causes them to develop or that's part of what causes them to develop, develop fatty buildups and, and that sort of thing and so that could save a lot of lives technology coming and really good news for women um, mammograms might be on their way out um, there's a uh, there's a way that scientists and doctors can measure or can monitor uh, your chances of having cancer or whether, whether or not you do have cancer uh, through your either blood or breast milk. So there, there are proteins in the blood and proteins in the breast milk that change when a person has uh, breast cancer. Or when a woman has breast cancer, however you want to say it. And uh, they have learned how to monitor those specific proteins. So huge news, mammograms are not pleasant, I've heard from many people. And, uh, yeah, just the less often you have to be exposed to that. And this also opens up to uh, all younger people to uh, be more closely monitored for, for breast cancer and younger, younger people as well. So it, uh, yeah, could be really, really great news. I'm just going to kind of push a fly away here, apparently. And... Uh, Pull some pins on this bit of work that we've done. 
And we will call that an episode. So, just want to say thank you very much for joining me. I do really appreciate the time we get to spend together. And the time spent together is all too precious. Don't forget that. So, got a good chunk of the uh, Canada Cannabis flag. And we will carry on next time. So, again, thanks a lot for joining me. Really appreciate the time we get to spend. And until next time, keep chilling. Don't forget your cookie. Peace.